whenever the history of 20th century Islam will be written, the name of Abu Lala Maududi will banner very prominently as the Amir of Jamaat Islami, or better known as the head of Islamic Brotherhood in Pakistan, this giant dominated Islamic discourse both in Pakistan as well as abroad. In his passing, he left two legacies. His enormous literature and writings about Islam that became the property of every scholar who wanted to pursue scholarship in Islam. And the second, his Jamaat or Jamaat Islami. And to know, better know about Jamaat Islami, we're honored to have and privileged to have a guest here who is the Amir, the current head of Jamaat Islami, Honorable Qazi Hussain Ahmed. Welcome to Islam Arab for Focus. Thank you. <coughs> Qazi Sahib, uh, what is it like to be sitting in the position of such a giant person as Abu Lala Maududi, as his heir and as the leader of Jamaat? How do you see yourself in that position? As far as uh, the uh, state of uh, Sayyid Abu Lala Maududi is concerned, he was the founder and the initiator of a very great movement of renaissance and a great movement of Islamic resurgence. But Alhamdulillah, in his lifetime, he had worked hard and there was a wide circle of people who were associated with him. And he left behind, as you rightly said, a legacy. And uh, uh, in his legacy, the jamaat -e islami and the party which he founded, it was, in my opinion, more important then the, the, the work of in his, uh, his writings in his writing and well, his the reason why knowledge. Mentioned. Yes, this, this is worth mentionable. Yes, sir. This is worth mentionable. But this work has been done by many people before him and during this time also. But actually this uh, resurgence is because of the action which we has taken. Mm -hmm. And he has assembled the people, the, the like-minded people, and he has put them to work. Uh, basically, that's what I would like to come see. His, his literature, his work about Islam, became the property of anyone who would like to pursue scholarship in Islam anywhere in the world. However, jamaat islami basically is a core group within the Indian subcontinent. What I wanted to ask you, sir, that now that most of us who are in the West, and there is a large group of former members of jamaat islami in the West, do you see the role of Jamaat Islami above and beyond Pakistan? Uh, Jamaat Islami is the organization of the Muslim political and social parties and this idea, who, uh, the organizations who have adopted this idea of the resurgence of Islam from Mawlana Maududi Rahimahullah. And, uh, this idea was that it presented Islam as the system of life, not as mere religion and not uh, as mere politics, but as the system of the conducting the whole life of man. And uh, whoever adopted this uh, thinking and whoever adopted the uh, system of organization, and Maulana Maududi also evolved a system of organization. And there are so many political parties and groups organized in different parts of the world in the same thinking, on the same way. Not only the message is the same, but the way of the organization, the method of organization is the same. Therefore, it has got a universal message. Again, you in your introduction mentioned the Islamic Brotherhood, the yes, Muslim sir. Brotherhood, which yes, was founded by Imam Hassan al-Banna Shaheed rahmatullah. The same way, the uh, most of the organizations, Islamic organization is at present working in different parts of the world. They mention both of these personalities, Maulana Maududi as well as Imam Hassan al-Banna, okay. as their leaders and their founders. Well, let's focus on two issues. Jamaat Islami as a party playing a role in domestic politics and sociology of Pakistan, as well as a global organization playing the role throughout the Muslim movement throughout in the world. 
In Pakistan, Jamaat is often accused as a perennial opposition party that always enjoys sitting in the opposition, always like to take a position that is against the government. Is it inherently against the philosophy of Jamaat to work with the people from other schools of thoughts? Actually, that uh, time has not come when Jamaat Islami can uh, play an effective role inside the government because uh, Jamaat Islami did not have any sufficient uh, support from the masses or it did not have sufficient members in the elected assemblies of the, the country and therefore no effective role could be given to Jamaat Islami. Why not, sir? Because that, uh, uh, this, this is passing through these stages and when this stage will come, and it can come, it is very in the near future it can come, when Jamaat Islami can play that role with, the, uh, with other part, political parties or without other political parties. Would you think that would, Jamaat would have fared much better had Jamaat taken a lesser role in politics and more in sociology and social building of Islamic society? I think that it will, would be the negation of the basic uh, principle and the basic ideology and thought of Islam which uh, Jamaat Islami has uh, propagated. And this was following in the footsteps of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who was at the same time the ruler and at the same time the religious leader. And uh, no, the, his life cannot be divided into different sections. The reason why parts. I asked you that question, sir, is because the appeal of your approach is generally among the educated and literate people in Pakistan all throughout the world. Whereas the literacy rate in Pakistan is extremely disappointing. I recall my childhood when in a very poor community, Jamaat used to run a school. And every year, if I can recall correctly from my childhood days, one or the other student used to actually excel in board exams. And if I look at it, the, my generation that grew up with Pakistan, if our teachers were the teachers, as you said, from that school of thought, you did not need to convince me to vote for Jamaat because it would become an automatically lifelong mission for me. So don't you think Jamaat in one sense failed that they should have focused more on education and social interaction within police and justice department and armed forces and the health care uh, instead of totally devoting to politics? I think that our uh, concentration and our devotion to politics has not blocked our way in working into the different aspects of the of life and at present we are running uh, uh, more than 2000 schools small and big in pakistan and uh, uh, about 600000 of uh, children students why not army. every professor why not every teacher why not every educator in pakistan yes we uh, we we, ha we are planning for that and this is our goal that uh, um, Inshallah, in a near future, uh, we will be up to your expectations. And this I am mentioned because uh, this is only uh, since a few years, uh, six or seven years, that we have uh, given more attention to education, and this is our, has become our first priority. And in these few years, these uh, uh, it, educational institutions of like-minded people have grown. They are growing very f at a very fast speed. And we have got this uh, program to eradicate illiteracy from Pakistan and also to uh, establish the basic schools and basic education units in order to impart the, the right thinking to the people of Pakistan. Two more questions on Pakistan, then we're going to come home to U.S. First, how important is Kashmir and why for Pakistanis? Actually, this is important because this is the unfinished part of the agenda of partition of India into Pakistan and uh, India. And uh, the Indians have got their freedom. The Pakistanis have got their freedom, but the Kashmiris are denied their freedom. And they were promised that uh, their future, whether they want to 
uh, annex with the uh, associate themselves with India or with Pakistan, this will be decided through a fair and uh, uh, plebiscite, free plebiscite under the UN auspices. And this right has never been given to them. This is important to Kashmiris, this is important to Muslims, and this is without this decision. The uh, partition agenda is unfinished. Sir, the hostile party in Kas Kashmir issue is India. Recently, Indian Prime Minister visited Pakistan, and Jamaat was a staunch opponent of that visit. How do you expect to resolve a dispute when you are not willing to engage with the Actually, we were not against the visit of Vajpayee. We only wanted that before coming to Pakistan, he should unequivocally declare that Kashmir is not the integral part of India. It is a disputed territory between India and Pakistan. And they must declare that we want to, to resolve this dispute. Actually, they are not recognizing the existence of the dispute. And we were demanding that before his coming, and we were against his coming to, uh, on bus to, uh, to Lahore. We wanted that he should declare that Kashmir is a disputed area. We want to resolve it. And he should send his team to Islamabad for negotiations. Uh, before this uh, resolution of Kashmir and before recognition of the dispute of Kashmir. I don't think that his visit was fruitful. Well, that matter, I guess, will leave for you to resolve in Pakistan. Or welcome to the United States, and let's talk about U.S. Uh, as we all know that there is a presence of you know, Jamaat Islami in the U.S., how do you see that Jamaat functioning in this country, and what is the liaison between that Jamaat or the local organization and the mother organization? Actually, Jamaat Islami as an organization is not uh, present. Uh, well, in, in some form, is known as Islamic Circle Actually, of North America. Actually, this is the Islamic <laughs> Circle of North America is the organization of the Muslims living in America. All the Muslims with affiliation local, to Jamaat. Not uh, no, for, no formal uh, no affiliation, formal. no formal affiliation, and no organizational affiliation. But uh, they are working in uh, the Muslims. American Muslims, and more or less the same lines on which uh, the Jamaat Islami is working in Pakistan. But there is Jamaat Islami is working in India also. It is working in Bangladesh. It is working in Sri, uh, Sri Lanka. No, I was not asking yeah. in any uh, critical way. I, yes. I, th I think it's You're, a very good no, sign. Yeah, yes. uh, American Muslims do need some kind yeah. of uh, affiliation and engagement. What I was trying to actually ask you is that if Jamaat or the people who are of like mind here, what do you think their agenda should be or what is their agenda? I think that this is a universal message. Islam is a universal message to all the humanity, to all mankind. And uh, if Muslims are uh, living in a particular country, this is their duty to present Islam and to organize the community as it was organized the, the, by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and they should be the torch bearer of justice and they should work as an example, as a model of good human beings. No man can become a good Muslim until he is a good human being and he should be kind towards the other people as who should be a, a, a friendly and he should be, uh, be servicing, uh, serving the, the community around him. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm so very glad that you mentioned that, that the, men, the mission and the message of Islam is universal and it's for the mankind. Uh, my question to you, sir, is that if our mission is for the mankind, don't you think we should engage with others in this country? I mean, non-Muslims, other Americans, yes, with their institutions? I agree with you that if there is uh, some lacking in this aspect, this should be uh, corrected. There is and uh, the, the people, Muslims, they should be, they should into it a dialogue with other people. And they should be uh, the uh, agents of uh, who, who can serve Islam, who can serve humanity. And in this way only, they can fulfill their, their duties as good citizens. I'm and impressed yes. that you said that yes. because it is very seldom that we hear Muslim scholars actually suggesting that. There are issues that are of common interest. Abortion, birth control, sex education, 
all these issues are equally concerned for Muslims as they are concerned for the practicing Jews and Christians. Unfortunately, there are Jewish organizations and Christian organizations who are working on these lines, but there are no Muslims who are participating with them. Would you suggest that we should engage with them in this area? Yes, and all the common interests. All the, this is it is a common this, interest. This is the call of the Quran. قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ تَعَالَوْا إِلَىٰ كَلِمَةٍ سَوَاءٍ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ All the people of earlier revelations come to that point which is common between us. And if there is a common ground and if the common ground can be struck, this will be good. Would you instruct the followers of Jamaat and the followers yes, of Abu Dhabi? Yes, this is not only my instructions. This is the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of God. And this is the instructions of the Prophet. What brought you to the U.S. out of curiosity? Um, the Islamic Circle of North America had invited me to their annual convention. And after their annual convention, the jef different chapters in the Muslim communities and the societies in different cities of the United States, they invited me to their uh, gatherings and their meetings. And I am on this tour, but uh, I had to cut short my my... Um, my visit because of the situation which has uh, grown up in uh, I have lived home. in this country for 30 years from my youthful days and I have found that there are three adversaries that Islam faces or Islamic movement faces one those Muslims who find Islamic movement threat for themselves one those non-Muslims who consider Islam as a threat and the third and the most powerful in my opinion is the media why Muslims don't use the media? Why there is such a lack in media relations, public relations, in our, throughout yeah. the Muslim community? Yes, the Muslims have uh, given less attention to media, especially to the uh, non-Muslim media, which is working here. And there should be frequent dialogues, there should be, should be frequent visits. And they should, uh, the Muslims should uh, re uh, reflect their opinions in the uh, local media. If you you like something which is on the media, you should send your appreciation. And you, if there is some disliking and this is a difference, you should send, you should communicate uh, with them, and you should uh, 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 make them uh, aware that there is, what are the feelings of the Muslims, and what are the feelings of the local people. As you mentioned earlier that our mission is global, Muslim mission is global, and we must try to impact the society. In, the, in a democratic society, there are only two methods to change the society, either by bullet or by ballot. In America, of course, we use by ballot. Would you suggest that American Muslims should engage in political process here? In the political process, yes. They should vote? They should. They should, uh, they should run they for should, offices? Yes, I think that they should communicate with the local leaders. Should they join American Armed Forces? Uh, I am a this veteran. I served in American Armed Forces for two yes, years. Yes, but this I am not a mufti. No, I'm this, a man. This you can. This is a. This, this you this, can. This is not a. This yes. is not a religious issue. It's yes. purely yes. political and social. This this should be asked from the muftis, from the shuyukh and uh, and ulama of the living in the. The reason America. why I yes, asked, sir, that when I was in armed forces, yeah. a war broke out with Israel, and within the armed forces there was a massive dialogue. And I spoke, and people knew my position. And I think there is a void that the American armed forces, American decision makers, don't hear the Muslim side because we don't engage with them. Yeah. Actually, this is a question which wants uh, religious scholarship. And as I will... Uh, well, you are a resourceful person. Ask some scholars. <laughs> yes. I will ask the, the scholars about this question. I would like to ask you one question yeah. that my daughter asked me to ask you. I have two daughters. Her, and she's a frequent visitor to Pakistan. She asked me to ask you, if Muslims in Pakistan are practicing on Quran and Sunnah, why is such a deterioration among the Muslim youth in Pakistan? Actually, they are not practicing according to the Quran and Sunnah. And this is the big, biggest obstacle in our the problem world. Is the I'm challenge not is not uh, from outside. The challenge is from inside. If the Muslims are good example of uh, good models, of Islam and the teachings of Quran and Sunnah, there will be no obstacle for the spread of, Quran, of Islam. American Muslim youth, when they visit Pakistan or other Muslim countries, are often scorned at as being not the one who are practicing right Islam. And therefore, this issue came up. So you would suggest that they are not practicing Islam. Actually. I think that majority of the Muslims in Pakistan, 
they will not claim that they are the real models of Islam, the majority of them. They will say that, yes, there is need for reformation. And uh, uh, I don't think that the, the Pakistanis will claim that they are the models of a good Islam, a good Muslims. As you mentioned, that there is a serious need to actually uh, develop education and, 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 and increase the literacy rate in Pakistan. Do you think that there is something that can be done between the American Muslim community and the Muslim communities in Pakistan that would help enhance this education? Yeah, I think that education is our priority. And the American Muslims should be concerned, the Muslim community should be concerned about the illiteracy and the lack of education. Education is not only literacy. Education is a wide general term, virus, exactly. a general term, and Jamaat Islami Pakistan has got a <coughs> program to eradicate illiteracy in within uh, five to ten years from Pakistan, whether we are in government or we are not in government. Sir, as an American citizen and as an American Muslim, I believe that America's Muslim community is probably one of the most resourceful in the world, if not the most educated, most affluent, and perhaps most involved. Do you think that American Muslim community has a powerful and significant role to play in the global Islam in the future? Yes, I'm sure. Therefore, I'm here. That I recognize the importance of us, uh, American America and the Muslim community working in here. I have been involved with a lot of Jewish organizations, Christian organizations in social work. Every year during the summer, groups of American Jews travel to Israel where they are actually educated, trained, exposed to their philosophy, their ideology, their thoughts. Why can't Jamaat make some kind of arrangements like that and bring American Muslim youth to Pakistan or to other Muslim countries where they would be exposed not only to a brotherhood among the Muslim communities but also to their heritage, their culture and exchange the views. And it will open the position for, for Muslims from those countries also. We have opened this program and uh, the first page of the people came from the UK and the uh, Muslim youth, organization of Muslim youth, they sent a, a group and I will invite the American Muslims community and their representatives, the youth, and we can uh, guide them and we can arrange for their tour of, the, uh, of Pakistan. And I have noted this suggestion and I will communicate with other Muslim personalities and organizations and also you I will ask your help and if you can arrange, yours yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, in America I think one of the most powerful institutions right now and some of the most powerful people are Masajid and their Imams unfortunately there is a very very poor organization lack of organization rather I r right after the Kosovo operation American bishops appealed to the president to stop bombing of Kosovo, of, of Yugoslavia. But there was not one Muslim community in our community, not one Muslim organization that had Kosovo as part of their khutbah. Do you think that there is need for you to engage with these imams and involve with them or send the people who are of your school of thought to come and lead these? I'm astonished to listen to heard it from you because uh, today I was praying Juma prayer in one of the mosques and there was an appeal for fundraising for Kosovo. Uh, it's, it's, always after the fact, was, huh? it's always after the fact, unfortunately. Uh, but, uh, I think and I understand that the ICNA, they had uh, sent a mission to Kosovo and they were working for it and still they are there. And uh, I think that uh, uh, the Muslims and their societies and their Imams are concerned with these problems. And again, I will ask uh, you, to approach the ICNA or the ISNA, ISNA. And this is the work of the uh, ISNA organization like ISNA, ICNA, to approach the Imams and Khatibs and to brief them on these current uh, topics concerning Muslim Ummah. And uh, when the whole media is supporting an issue and the American nation as a whole is concerned with it, they are involved. This is a good opportunity to be involved in such uh, I, I think America problem. has actually for the first time proven a very powerful argument to the Muslim world that she stands for certain principles irrespective of who they're dealing with, Muslims or non-Muslims. In case of Kosovo and Yugoslavia, there was a massive outcry because there were Christians bombing Christians for Muslims. And I think Muslims 
owe some kind of actually gratitude and thanks to to the United States in this respect. What is your opinion about America's role in this case? Uh, actually, the uh, that was, this was too late that they approached them, and uh, the damage had been done. And after the bombing also, the damage could not be stopped. And the Kosovans were denied the right of uh, self-determination or independence, the right of freedom or independence. And they were forced to be inside Yugoslavia. And I am afraid that uh, inside of Yugoslavia they will not uh, be able to keep their independence or their security. Uh, their security will uh, is still under threat and this will remain under threat. And as a last word, sir, do you have anything to say to our audience? Uh, to your audience and to the American people and the American nation, I will uh, say that uh, Islam is a universal message. This is a message and religion of humanity for all mankind. We are not intolerant. We are not terrorists. We are peace. We are the exponents of justice. And we have been ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to be a community staunch in justice and uh, to be witnesses for Allah. And uh, this is the duty of Muslims and of Islam to be uh, serving humanity, to be of help to humanity. And this image which has been created by certain section of uh, Muslims and Islam has been bracketed with militancy, Islam has been bracketed with intolerance. I think this is unjust and this is the duty of all our fellow um, human beings to make this a, a, in reality a global village and make this, this in reality a human family and everybody should understand each other and there should we should enter into dialogue. And we are not isolationist, we are not exclusivists. We believe in dialogue and we believe in uh, communication with other. Well, with that note, sir, people. I thank you very much for being our guest and thank you for watching.